Hello, Dr. Todorova. My name is Brian Haas. This is my son, Jaden. Jaden's 18 years old. I'm going to ask Jaden, uh, Jaden, do you give us permission to go ahead and videotape this uh, thoracic lung exam? Yes. Okay, awesome. I've washed my hands. Uh, after that, I've come into the room there. First part of the exam is inspection. Uh, we're looking at Jaden's overall chest. I uh, want to see the shape of the chest. Uh, if he, he has a part of the chest where the sternum is concaved in, that's pectus excavatum. If the chest is barreled out like that, like a pigeon chest, that's pectus carinatus. Uh, we're going to look at that. Uh, we want to look at his uh, overall breathing. We want to see his rate, his rhythm, um, his effort. We want to see his any difficulty breathing. Is he using his accessory muscles like the SCMs or the intercostals to try to breathe? Um, Jaden's breathing normally here. Rate looks good, rhythm looks good. He's uh, not breathing with any discomfort there. Um, we also want to look at the back part of the chest there. We want to look at the spine maybe. We want to see if there's any scoliosis or any kyphosis there. When we look at the, uh, the front and the side angle there, we're looking at the AP to, uh, uh, ratio comparing the AP uh, anterior and posterior chest to the lateral part of the chest. That should be uh, two to one um, normally. If that chest is barreled out like that, if someone's got emphysema or COPD, that's gonna be a barrel chest and that ratio would then be a one to one ratio there. Next part of the exam is looking at Jaden's lips. We see, does he have any cyanosis or any blue coloring there? Looking at his hands and his fingers, fingernails. We're looking to see if there's any clubbing of the fingernails, indicating any cardiovascular or lung problems. Uh, maybe there's anemia issues there. We then want to then assess his capillary refill to see if he's got a nice pink return with his capillary bed there, and he does. That's great there. The next part of the exam is uh, palpation. We want to palpate the costochondral cartilage there where the manubrium and sternum are to see if there's any tenderness, any, any pain at all in that area. And of course, we'd also palpate the back part of the chest there, palpate the spine back there to see if there's any deformities, any pain, any tenderness there as well. Next part of the exam is we'll do tactile fremitus. So we're going to start in the front here. I'm going to take the blade of my hand on the ulnar side. We're going to place it on the intercostal muscles there. We're going to do a ladder effect going across and down and across. We're going to have the patient say 99 every time we do this. Go ahead and put my hand on your chest there. Support. 99, 99, 99. We should be able to 99. hear that vibration of 99, 99 equally 99. on both sides. 99, 99. Good. Let's go ahead and turn around there. Now we're going to do it on the posterior side. 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99. Great. Next part of the exam is let's, uh, let's do his um, respiratory excursion to see how well he's, his lungs expand. We're going to come up like this here. So let's go ahead and put our fingers here. As we put our thumbs close together, we ask the patient to take a deep breath. As he does, you can see the thumbs expand equally and symmetrically on both sides there. We would also do that on the front there as well. One more time. Okay. Good. The next part of the exam is we want to start with uh, percussion. We want to percuss using our non-dominant hand, the index or the uh, middle finger, the last digit there. With our dominant hand, the digit there, we're going to strike that. And as we strike every load there in a ladder effect, we want to hear resonance where the lung sounds are at. We should hear lung resonance. We want to stay off the shoulder blades, stay on the lung fields. Good. We come laterally here. I'm going to do an anterior. On the right side there, the anterior. And this is the posterior side. I'm going to do all three. Uh, parts of the lung there, to uh, the uh, middle, the top, middle, and lower portion. On the left side is the top and the lower portion of the lung there. After we do that, we want to do um, diaphragmatic excursion. This is what we're going to do is see is the diaphragm, how it's expanding there. So what we're going to do is we're going to start from the top here. 
We're going to ask the patient to take a deep breath in and then you hold that breath as long as you just hold that breath. Go ahead and take a deep breath in. And we're going to tap for resonance until we get to dullness. And then there's dullness there. So we go ahead and mark that there. We've marked that. Go ahead and release. Good. Then we'd ask the patient to take another deep breath in. Take a deep breath in. And then we would start from the bottom. Now hold. And we would go here. Now we'd tap from dullness until we get to resonance. And there it is. And then we'd mark that there. So those two marks there, that measurement there, go ahead and uh, breathe. That should be about a three to six centimeter difference there, that measurement there. We would do it on both sides there, that respiratory excursion there, uh, or diaphragmatic excursion. Sorry, go ahead and turn around there for me. So we want to then percuss the front part of the chest there. Same thing, we want to percuss all fields there. In a ladder effect, we're listening for that resonance there. Nice good resonance in this young man's healthy lungs. We come lateral here, lateral here. Again, we would do the respiratory excursion in the front there as well. The next part of the exam is we're going to auscultate his lungs. We want to listen to his lung field and see how they're, see if we hear some good sounds there. We're going to start with the diaphragm here. We're going to come up here. Go ahead and take some deep breaths for me. Good. Come laterally here. Good. Same thing. Want to do a lateral shape of the listening to his lungs there. Um, what we're listening for is we want to hear mostly. Uh, we want to hear uh, bronchovesicular and vesicular lung sounds in the chest there. Uh, we want, definitely want to make note if there's any adventitious lung sounds, like any, any if the patient's got any wheezing, any ronchi, uh, any rails, uh, any popping, uh, frematis, anything like that. We want to make note of that in the chest there. So we're going to do that. And we're going to go ahead and, and do the posterior side, listen to his lungs. So the posterior side, same thing. Take deep breaths in. Let it out. Good. Post here, chest, chest here, and the lateral side. We want to listen to all lung fields. On the right side, there's three lobes of the lung: top, middle, and post, and uh, inferior. And on the left side, there's two lobes here. Good. Go ahead and turn around for me. The next part of the exam, this is a specialty test there. We should want to do bronchopathy, um, bronchopathy and uh, bronchophony. I think that's how you pronounce it. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, what we're going to do is have the patients with their stethoscope, we're going to have the patient say 99. Go ahead and say 99. 99. 99. Okay. Good. 99. 99. 99. Good. So with our stethoscope, we hear kind of a muffled 99. If there is was uh, any type of consolidation there, we would hear more of a, a resonant or very sharp 99 if there's any consolidation in his lungs. So that concludes the exam. Thank you so much. Again, my name is Brian Haas. Thank you. Good job.